Welcome to the March update of the greenhouse. We've just got peppers going right now. More veggies will be following suit here pretty soon. Most of this is my nursery stock and then a good chunk of it is also for hot sauce production and then also seed production. So you might be able to tell some of these things are looking stoked like these guys. These guys not so much. So if you're wondering what's going on here, these guys were transplanted a couple weeks earlier than these guys, believe it or not. And these guys were all overwatered. I was getting too anxious early on. I was wanting to hit them with some compost tea and some other stuff and didn't let them dry out quick enough or didn't let them dry out enough between waterings. Watered again and then they all just kind of had wet feet. Transplanted them a little too soon so they're a little too small. They didn't fill out as quickly as I'd like. And that's just kind of what happens when you're limited in space and you just got to work with what you got. So one of the indicators here that lets you know it's from overwatering is these dying cotyledons, the, the first first leaves you got on the peppers here. When you start seeing the yellowing from the bottom up like that, it usually signifies a watering issue, usually overwatering. Under watering, you're just going to get droopy plants. If you're not watering enough and not frequently enough, you'll see some signs of damage or stress or stunting, but this is mostly from overwatering. As you can see here, this guy's starting to come out of it now. They were all looking pretty sad for quite some time, but I finally managed to let them all dry out. Slowly been bottom watering, uh, feeding. That's what that looks like because I've just got a tray here nutrient solution stick the tray in there let them water or feed from the bottom if i had done this from the get-go i probably wouldn't have had the overwatering issue but i just completely saturated everything from up top so when you bottom water it allows the soil to dry out a little bit quicker because you're not saturating the top it also helps reduce issues with uh, fungus gnats because it's not a super wet environment that the gnats can thrive in and so yeah, I'll probably make another video talking specifically about that, but that's kind of what we're seeing so far. More peppers, more peppers, more peppers and more peppers. And I've got some onions that are not looking very stoked. This is my first year growing them. And yeah, I kind of had a fungus net issue, but it's starting to lighten up. I got my chives here, bunching onions, leeks. More peppers. This is a, another example of overwatering. These are some of the first things I transplanted. And look how small they are compared to those. What the heck? I know better. Sometimes you get eager. Lessons learned again. Especially this tray. I'm not very happy about this one. This one's a bunch of my crosses. And it's going to take a little bit for those guys to perk back up. These are some freshly transplanted. I just transplanted these guys today, just like an hour ago. About 70 or so. They're all looking pretty stoked. This is a pretty ideal time to transplant. I ideally would have waited to transplant those guys, but I had some issues at the very start of the season. Not really going to go into it into this video. But I've been, you know, making up ground. These guys are just getting a little bit hungry, so just fed them. And yeah, that's basically the update for March. Thanks for watching.